Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a funky style panorama in Photoshop. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's have a look and see what it is that we're trying to do. This is the funky style panorama that we're going to create. Now it's a really handy way of putting together a set of images into something that's a little bit more visually exciting perhaps than a regular panorama and it also works really, really well when you haven't shot a very good panoramic sequence. You might be missing bits or you might find that Photoshop tries to put it together and just isn't getting the result that you want. So in this case we're going to break up the panorama and just make it our own. The first thing you'll need for any panorama is a series of images and as I said it really doesn't matter how you've captured these and in actual fact it actually works really really well if you don't capture them as if you were doing a serious panorama. Now if you've got yours and it is a little bit too serious then you can go into Photoshop and you could rotate these images and crop them a little bit just to break up the sequence so you have something a little bit more visually interesting. And then you'll want to open only the panoramic sequence. So only open your panoramic images so that they're the only things that are currently in Photoshop. Then you can go ahead and assemble your panorama. I'm going to choose File and then Automate and then I'm going to choose Photo Merge. This launches the panoramic option in Photoshop. And I get a series of options here. Now the first thing I want to do is not blend the images together. So I'm going to turn that off. And I do want something a little bit visually interesting. So I'm going to choose the cylindrical option. And then I'm going to select to add the open files because at the moment the images that I have open are all the images that I want to put into my panorama. Well that is except the finished version so I'm just going to remove that. So here are all my images. Again blend images together is turned off because I do not want them blended and I want something a little bit funky so cylindrical or spherical will probably give me an interesting result. So I'll just click OK and let's see what happens. And Photoshop is going to go ahead and try and line up these images into a serious panorama. It's sort of what we want but not quite, but it'll give us a good starting point. And in actual fact here is the finished panorama, well at least as far as Photoshop is concerned and it's tried to line everything up. Let's go to Window and then Layers so that we can see what we have. Because I chose not to blend, there is no masking here and in this case for this particular panorama we do not want Photoshop to do any masking. But you can see that it, because we chose the cylindrical option we've got some nice bending in our images which is really quite an attractive look. Let's just go and get our tools as well. So I've got my toolbar here and what I can do is select my Move tool and take any of these images and just break them apart a little bit more than they are at the moment. So I can just move them slightly so that the panorama is even a little less serious than it was previously so that everything is not lined up because this is a funky panorama, not a serious one. And I can even rotate the images a little bit. So now that I've got the panorama perhaps looking the way I want it to look, let's see what we can do about adding an edge to the images. I'm going to start with the first layer which is this bottom most layer and I'm going to click the FX or add a layer style icon and I'm going to choose a stroke. Now I can add a stroke around the image so I'm just going to make it for example something like a 30 pixel stroke and you can see it around this image here but at the moment it's got rounded corners which are really unattractive and it's black. So let's just click in the color option here and I'm going to select white up here. So that's 255, 255, 255 in the red, green and blue channels. So I'll click OK and I can stop the rounded corners by positioning it on the inside. 
so that the white border is inside the image. In fact, I think 30 is probably not quite big enough, so let's go for 35. And then I'll click OK. Now I've added this stroke border to the first image. We want to put it on all the other layers. We could go and do it manually, but there's a way easier way to do it. I'm going to right click this effect area here and I'm going to choose Copy Layer Style. So that copies this layer style. Now I'm going to click on the second to bottom layer, shift click on the topmost layer so that I have all the rest of the images on their layers selected, then right click and choose Paste Layer Style. And that pastes the layer style onto all the other images in the sequence. And now to finish off, really all we need is a new bottom layer. So I'm going to click on the bottommost layer of the image and then Control click to add a new layer underneath it. Now if your layer doesn't go in the right place, all you need to do is just move it into position. And let's fill this with a color that will sample from the image. So from my toolbar here, I'm just going to go and get my eyedropper tool here and let's go and sample a sort of blue color from the sky. And here's the blue color that I've sampled and now I'm going to just fill this layer with this blue color. I can do it a number of ways but one way is just to use the paint bucket tool and just click here to fill this layer with the blue color. And there's our funky panorama created in Photoshop. We've used the panorama sequence tool that Photoshop has for assembling our panorama, but then we've broken it up and made it a little more visually interesting. And if you still want to do some work on it, you can do so. I've selected this topmost layer and because this image is a little small, I'm just going to shift drag on its corner to make it a little bit larger. And I can do that with these other images just by locating the image that I want to make changes to and then shift dragging on it to make it smaller or larger or to reposition it elsewhere within the panorama. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on this YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be advised when new video tutorials are released. Also visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find tips, tricks and tutorials for a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.